You are now listening to Shia, the Era of Our Female-Led Society, a dramatic fiction audiobook series written by Kierica the Oracle, presented by Female-Led Society. Dot org. Chapter 6 It's evaluation time for the three nominees for the position of Community Shia of Sur America. Each of the candidates must spend the next eight weeks visiting the seven Shias to learn from them and to get to know them. At the end of the eight weeks, the Shias will offer their recommendations and the Shia Supreme will choose from them to become one of the eight leaders of the world. The contenders, Brian, confirmed aristocrat for eight years. He created a water purifying system that was distributed freely to every third world country, kickstarting his movement for improved living conditions that included constructing schools to teach locals labor skills that they used to rebuild their own communities, effectively ending the notion of third world countries entirely. Eliza, confirmed aristocrat for six years. She created a sexual and emotional abuse awareness program that has been implemented in all primary schools. The program teaches children how to identify and report cases of abuse without fear. When introduced in the inaugural city, more than 100 parents were arrested. Since her program's inception, child reported abuse cases have decreased by 200% in her community. Her programs are being duplicated in its second community, community with impressive results. Rain. Confirmed aristocrat for three years. She created a psychological basis for the acceptance of negative emotions, which led to a global well-being program that encourages self-acceptance and mental freedom for teenagers. Using multimedia projects, Rain's radical mental health philosophies have decreased reports of depression in teens by 30% in its first year of inception. Who will become the next Community Shia of Sur America? Rain waits patiently for the car that will take her to the airport. She's off to start her eight-week evaluation, and she's feeling a bit numb. When the car arrives, the doorman takes her luggage and then opens the car door. She steps inside and says hello to the driver who nods and begins to drive. Rain is lost in her thoughts, wondering what the next eight weeks will bring when she notices that the car is stopping in front of a big black building. The car door opens and Cameron, Shia Glory's keeper, pokes his head inside. Rain, good to see you. We have a quick meeting before you head out. Please come with me. Rain is surprised and extremely nervous as she follows him out of the car and into the big black building. She notices security lining the white hallways. A guard stands about every three feet. When they reach a solid black door, Cameron smiles and walks inside first. Welcome, Rain. It's Glory, the Shia Supreme. Rain looks around the bare room and smiles at the other guests, Brian and Eliza. Both are sitting in dark blue wing chairs, and there's an identical one next to it reserved for her. The Shia Supreme is seated in a bright red wing chair a few feet away, close enough for their meeting to be intimate but not close enough to seem too familiar. Glad you made it, Rain. Do you know Brian and Eliza? Brian stands and extends his hand. Eliza does the same. They greet each other nervously, understanding that this is a competition that neither of them have any control over. The trio sits down and Shia Glory explains her mission. You are the top three candidates for the position of Community Shia of Sewer America. To make it this far indicates that you have exceptional leadership and social responsibility skills. We appreciate you. Over the next eight weeks, you will spend time with our community Shias. Each of you will have one-on-one time with them so that they can get to know you and assess your ability to solve problems and to work together with them as a team. This is not a test, although it may feel like it at times. 
There is no way that you can cheat or fake your way through this process, so I advise you not to try. I respect the community she is and their recommendations are important to me, Glory says. But ultimately, I have the final say. If at any time you feel uncomfortable with any of the shias, you have my permission to contact Cameron and share your feelings without retaliation. My hope is that these next eight weeks will allow you to see the position that you are being considered for in a manner that you would never have experienced otherwise. If you decide that this is not a position that you are ready for, please let me know immediately and you will be dismissed without judgment. You will continue to be an aristocrat and work on your projects. I will still be proud of you. Do you all understand? Yes, ma'am. The three nominees say in unison. As you may have experienced from being an aristocrat, this is not a job. This is a life commitment. Once you step onto the world stage as a leader, your life will never be the same again. We do need leaders. We need one of you to step up and help us to continue the work that we have begun 23 years ago. I believe in you. I trust you, Glory says, and looks each one of them in the eye. I love you. Good luck to you. She is supreme, stands, and the nominees follow suit. With a solemn nod, she walks away, leaving the three nominees behind. Are you scared? Eliza asks him. I'm trying not to be, Brian replies. I don't know how to feel, Rain admits. We've come this far, Eliza says. We may as well take it all the way. Right, Brian says, and Rain nods. See you on the other side, Eliza says, and Cameron whisks her away. Good luck, Brian, Rain says, and notices a distant yet sad look in his eyes. Thanks, Rain. You too. The door opens, and he leaves. Rain stares down at her hands. Minutes later, the door opens and Cameron is there to escort her to her car. As he walks her to her car, he leans in and whispers, Be careful. The Shia Reese is a joker, but she is not a joke. Before heading back to Sur America on her private jet, Shia Glory wants to visit an old friend. She asks for only one escort as she is driven to the high-rise apartment, donning a simple black sweater, jeans, and black cap. The doorman recognizes her and allows her inside. She is keyed up to the penthouse and is antsy as she walks, waits for the elevator to stop. Once it does, the door is open and she leaves her escort inside. Are you home? Glory yells out. She hears a clicking noise and the balcony door opens and shuts. She follows the sound to find her old friend toweling off fresh out of the jacuzzi. Glory! T. Erica! Girl, what are you doing here? You know you're the only one who can come up here unannounced. I was about to get my gun. Yeah, right, Glory says. It's so good to see you again. She sits down in an empty chair. Same here, T. Erica says. What's wrong? Why are you here? I was here to do some business and I realized it's been so long. No, T. Erica interrupts her. Why are you really here? You don't come to see me unless you need to. What is it? Well, you're the oracle, Glory says. You tell me. I am a counselor, not a mind reader. You are a mind reader. When I feel like it, not today. Now tell me what's bothering you so I can set it right. We can fix it. Let's go. T. Erica pulls on her robe and sits next to Glory. Um, I'm scared, Glory admits. She doesn't have to say anything else. Tierica looks over at her friend and smirks. You're human, Glory. You may be the savior of the world, but you are a human, and this is what we go through during this life experience. Feel it. It goes away. You are a gift. You won't let us down. It's not because I see it. It's because it's the divine plan for your life. Feel it. Feel the fear. It goes away. Kierka reaches over to hug her friend. Glory hugs her back. Whenever you say it, I feel like it's true. Glory confesses to Tierka. No one else has that impact.
Everyone says that. I'm the oracle, Tierica jokes. Now take your scary ass on. I have a massage in 20 minutes. The Jackson twins. I got to shave. Glory laughs and sees herself out. She calls the elevator and steps in, feeling relieved after her visit with her old friend. Glory's still laughing when the elevator opens on the 23rd floor. She's shocked. She gasps when a tall man walks in. Uh Uh-oh. It's Galvin. The elevator door is closed. Glory braces herself, tense and annoyed. What do you want? She asks him. And the elevator seems to move in slow motion. I want you to know that your time is almost up, he sings. You cannot stop what I plan to do. Listen, do what the fuck you got to do. Glory challenges him. I already did, Galvin responds. The elevator stops and he steps out. He stretches his hand out and drops something inside the elevator before the door is closed. Glory stares at it. What is that? It's it's the Shia's diamond head chain. It's, it's Shia Magdalene's official head chain. Glory shakes her head and bangs her fist against the elevator doors. No!